Anakin did not get the memo about proper footwear. Anakin, no! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, we're gonna take a little look at the Hasbro Star Wars The Black Series Target exclusive Clone Wars wave, whatever this thing is. No, I was very, very lucky, and I, I know that. I went to my Target last Saturday morning, nothing on the pegs. I happened to stop back by 8.30 that night, and they had Anakin, Echo, and Obi-Wan. And then I caught the clone pilot, Hawk, online later that night. I was shooting the whole Marvel Legends wave. I didn't finish until 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I checked, and I, the wave was up. By the next morning, they were sold out. And then throughout the past week, I think it's been Hawk and Anakin popping in and out of stock all morning, most mornings. Obi-Wan a few times. Echo, very rarely. So yeah, very lucky that I can do the whole wave at the same time. Target exclusives. Mm. The packages seem to replicate the three and three quarter inch Clone Wars series, but I wasn't into Star Wars at that point. I was knee deep in six inch. Yeah. I recognize the packaging and I know it's from back, what, 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, whenever these figures originally came out. I remember seeing them on pegs, but I would walk on by looking for, you know, my stuff. So these don't really hold any kind of nostalgia for me, but the packages aren't for me, the, just the figures. On the back, it's what we've been seeing with the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm with the timeline, the little explanation. It's weird not seeing a picture of the character back here. Warning, small parts, don't put them in your mouth. And that's about it. The plastic bubbles are on the front holding the figure. Let's open up Clone Pilot Hawk, see what's going on there. And what is the best way to get into this package? It looks like it's glued there. The sides here have a flap that go around the card. Easy, gentle, but that doesn't matter because then the bottom's glued on. For the most part, you're gonna be tearing some cardboard. Don't put them in your mouth! And very interesting, I knew coming in that it was reuse of the original Clone Trooper body. So I kind of thought, I'm not gonna like this as much as the newer bodies and stuff. But now that I have it all in hand and the new helmet, the new chest piece, I like it a lot better than what I was anticipating. Like I mentioned, this is all reuse from the old school Clone Trooper body, which a lot of people will probably prefer because of the double knees and the bigger shoulder pads. A nice improvement is the double elbows that we saw on uh, some of the later Clone Commanders. Was it Rex or something. They did some extra cutout on the gauntlet on the forearm and then a cutout on the bicep armor. It's slightly noticeable, but then it also gives you this much range compared to the original, which only... Goodbye, gun. I barely knew ye. Rest in peace. Big difference here. The old one's a little bit shinier, but the blues are pretty close. Oh, well, I say that it's all a reuse. It's not. The neck setup is different. Is that a new school torso with old school limbs? Notice the higher arcing curve at the articulation there. It's straight across on the old one. Yeah, those are the old abs. See how it sharply stops right there? It does the same on the original trooper. And on the newer one, it glides back. Old arms, old legs, old crotch, old lower abs, new torso, or at least the torso they've been using on the new clone troopers. I like how they're mixing and matching everything, trying to find the best combination. I have noticed one thing though, and it's only because I saw somebody mention it online. I think it was on the forums or somebody said something about swapping them. The lower legs are on the wrong side. On the old one, the meat around the articulation, it's thinner on the inside, thicker on the outside. On Hawk, it's thicker on the inside, thinner on the outside. And even looking at it, it does look a little bit odd. The leg comes down and kicks in and then goes down. It looks like the whole leg is shifted over below the knee. What I'm going to attempt to do is heat this up, pull this pin or pull the lower legs, swap them, see if it looks better. Okay, popped off. The pin's still in it. Pull the pin out, put it through one side of the leg, put the leg there, and then push the pin all the way the rest of the way through. You may have to heat it up again. It's cooled off since I've been messing with it. Okay, here they are swapped. See how the leg looks like it's more natural progression from top to bottom on both sides of the knee? But that leaves you with <laughs> the feet on the wrong side. So you also have to heat these up, pop them off, swap them. There we go. Much, much better. Feels more natural. It's not a big difference unless you're actually looking for it and it is kind of a pain in the ass to pop those pins and then swap the feet. It just looks better, I feel. And don't stab yourself with a screwdriver when you're trying to pry it all apart. Yeah. And I was bringing it in for a close up. I hadn't noticed it now that I'm looking through the camera lens. The front of the mask is glued on crooked too. At an angle, when I was looking at it like this, or like this, like this, like this, it didn't seem too crooked. It's only when I get 
right there. But now I can't unsee it because the tube comes out high there, low here. The helmet sculpt looks cool with this extra piece on the top right here. The tampos for the wings and the blues. It all looks great. And then those hoses run down to a chest box. And unless you get right up on it, it looks like it's just paint details on it. But there's actual sculpt under there. It's very animated feeling. Shit, I'm going to have to fix that too. I'm going to heat this up, see what happens. Okay, I didn't have to pull it completely off. What was happening, I think, is it wasn't glued on this side, so it was gapping out. Heated it up, softened it up kind of straightened it a little as much as I could and then glued this side down. Looks better, I think. This may be a case-by-case -case basis. I, I figure <laughs> Robo buys a figure, it's messed up a little bit. So it may just be mine. For articulation, I'm realizing the ball joint at the bottom of the neck and the ball joint going up. Oh, well, I guess it's a dumbbell joint up there. All that articulation in the neck, got these hoses running down to the chest box. So <laughs> it's going to be a little hindered. But even with that, you can look Oh, not bad up. Down, but it's all about the tilt, baby. Swivel gets to about right there, gets to about right there. Hinge at the shoulder goes up. Shoulder pad goes nicely into the torso, so you can come all the way up to 90. Swivel around. Rotation at the bicep at the armor point. Like we talked about, double elbow. Beautiful range for an armored character. Swivel at the wrist and up and down for trigger finger. Weapon holding hand is side to side. Ball joint, dumbbell joint, something. But you get some forward, some back, some tilt, some tilt. A Little bit of hula hoop action, not bad for a clone trooper. Is it hitting the belt? Get out of the way belt. That doesn't give you any more. Then you can rotate on that point. Ball coming out to the hip comes up, armor crashes. You gotta kind of turn it as you come up. It goes out a little bit, but Eh, not bad. Back, you're eh, about right there. Out, it's a clone trooper. <laughs> Rotation behind that armor point, very nice. Double knee, well, yeah. Actually, that's not bad, huh? Little restricted because of this strap coming through from the knee pad. Hinge at the ankle, yeah, runs right into the armor. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, we get the standard clone blaster that we've been getting for a while now. Got it with the old clone, got it with the new clone. Push and twist. Oh, and with that hinge on the right side, you get some nice, get your hand on there. You get some nice weapon holding poses. Who's there? We'll do all the heights and size comparisons at the end once I have them all free. Next up, let's crack Anakin open. I've been wanting to make this custom for a long time. Need to get this free, see what's going on. Oops. Damn it. There's a lot more new parts than I remember thinking when we first saw these promo shots. The legs are reused from the two previous Anakins. Same wrinkles to the legs, same boots with the buckles around them, same feet. And that's it. Well, I say that, the upper glove is very, very similar up on the forearm, but they would still have to redo the top of it because this articulation trench around the hinge right there, way bigger than the old one. Definitely different on the left side, though. You can see the wrinkles on the biceps and then full glove, of course. Different torso, different overlay different head but overall the proportions look excellent at first well and i still look at it sometimes thinking the shoulders are a bit low and the arms kind of droop to the sides but it also feels very natural and that's how the old ones lay too with the shoulders and the arms being close to the body new torso sculpt and this armor piece with this blue tunic coming in front of it that's an overlay piece works very very well though Ooh, it's got an open back then below that the belt and the hanging down tunic parts those are also a separate piece all split so you can get the legs up and it wasn't until i raised those up that i realized there's actually cloth under here and they did an excellent job of matching that burgundy color to the both the legs and the upper undershirt. The upper undershirt. Nice crisp detail to the tampo here. I wouldn't usually go for the red and blues, but <laughs> this just totally works. The shoulder pads work great too. It's a rubbery piece that hangs out, but then it's a ring that goes between the arm and the torso. Sometimes I get worried if I bring the arm up and it doesn't rotate with it, I'm gonna tear on it. So I kinda keep them together as I rotate. But honestly, it was the head I was worried about, but now that I see it in person, it's not that bad. Under my lights, it's a little glossy, which we've been seeing a lot with the Black Series within the photo reel. For some reason, it makes them look like they're sweating. For that natural progression from Attack of the Clones to Clone Wars to Revenge of the Sith, it's not bad. It does feel like the animated look brought into the real world. It still has the same beats to the facial structure and the hair. Then it looks more realistic like the other two. The eyes are nice. The lip color has the scar on the outside right here. And then the shorter hair, well, longer than Padawan, shorter than Revenge of the Sith. And I think that's why it stands out to me so much because we've never actually seen Hayden Christensen wear this hairdo. So it's it's hard for me to imagine this as a movie version of Anakin. But then I went and looked at the hot toys of this version of Anakin and this is damn close. As I'm messing around with it, I, 
this may be my favorite figure of Anakin so far. It's a neat design because, you know, the Jedi only have robes. They go into war, into battle. It seems like they would throw some armor pieces on. Going over articulation, there is a ball joint down at the bottom of the neck. At the top, I'm guessing that's a dumbbell joint. But watch this can still look up that much. Kicks forward, that's so beautiful. Swivels, butterfly joint at the shoulder, it goes back, goes forward. Outside of that is a hinge, comes up to 90. Swivels around, like I said, keep a hold of the shoulder pad if you're gonna do that. Hinge and swivel at the bicep, even with that longer cut, it still comes up to slightly past 90. Then that rotates, swivel at the wrist, and then an in and out hinge for a lightsaber hand. No Hasbro, no! Other side's the same. Ball joint at the waist. You get a little hula hoop action. Ball coming out to the hip, comes forward. Oh, back, that's not bad. Out, oh, okay out swivel at the thigh double knee let's get it outside that plastic tunic not quite you can force it Bing. hinge of the ankle goes ooh, all the way back forward about there forward facing pen for rocker for accessories we get anakin's blue lightsaber and it seems to be the same sculpt as the revenge of the sith version here just nicer silver and smaller paint details but the blades are different the new one has a the thicker blade where it kind of bulges out as it comes out of the emitter then it's just thicker overall lighter blue i'm not sure which one i like better oh that's very tight there's a peg that plugs into this hole right there in the belt oh it holds in fairly well i've expected it to just push itself back out most of my jedi have the lightsabers out uh, he may be displayed like this next up we're gonna take a look at arc trooper echo i would have assumed they would have gave us the bad batch first because that's currently going and it seems like they're making a mad dash to make that team, but this is also okay too because it fits in with the theme and we needed an art trooper, right? Oh, oh damn. I see you back there. It has this nub up on top. You gotta watch out for that getting stuck up in there. And definitely not as mobile as some of the other clone troopers because of, well, all this gear hanging off of it, but it makes them a big bulky boy and I like it. It makes them look badass. For the base body, it's the new clone trooper, which means we do get the hinge and swivel at the elbows and the knees. But below that, we get new gauntlets. This side has this design on the outside with the blues and the grays. On this side, oh, you get the rocket and the little buttons on the front. And with the articulation you can even get into a beep, 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 beep. the lower legs are also new with these shin sculpts squares on the front some lines on the back and then i was going to say the feet are different because of this top plate but it's the same foot just painted with that gray color at first i thought this was all one overlay but the belt and these straps coming down to the pouches and the holsters that's a separate piece on top of the comma and then this is a separate piece hanging under the belt well attached to the torso under there open in the front split in the back and it does traffic cone a bit unless you push the pouches up and then you get a little bit more flex then for the torso overlay it starts at the pack that is pinned into the back so mm, not a lot of movement there you can see the plastic coming forward up to the shoulder pads those Ooh, a little stiff, but they're even on both sides, so I guess they can throw some other colors, give us some troopers later. Comes around to the front, and then there's a chest overlay too. Have these pouches on the front, the handprint, that's the wrong hand, but you can see it, right? Of course mine's gonna be messed up. It's crooked, the center line on the overlay doesn't match up with the torso under it. And where's it glued? Can I peel it off? But I don't think this is gonna be a problem with everybody's. This is probably, again, a problem with just mine, because what's my name? Oh, wait. Did I get some snap? I got some snap. There is no pin. That was just glue. Can't leave it loose. It just flops around. You know, I was going to have to do it, right? There we go. Let's glue this sucker back down. And if you're wondering what kind of glue I use, I use JB Weld Super Weld. And then up at the head, this is a damn good looking clone head. In fact, it may be one of the better ones we've got in the line, especially paint wise. Again, there is some slight shininess to it, but not as bad as some of the others. I think it's the skin tone that really works here though. On Rex, I think this is very early with the photo reel. It's good. It, it may be the blonde hair throwing me though. I have to break out the dull coat for that stuff. <laughs> I'm fixing all the Star Wars figures today, huh? Like I mentioned earlier, all this overlay does kind of get in the way of the articulation. There is a ball at the neck that goes up to a dumbbell joint at the top. And eh, not a lot of up. Some down. Tilt is pretty good. Swivel. Butterfly joint at the shoulder goes forward and back. Shoulder pad goes up. Is it smashing in there? Goes around. Gonna run into that pauldron. Comes out. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up past 90 and then rotates in and out but be careful with that because it can pinch on this strap coming around for the elbow pad swivel at the wrist up and down for a trigger finger hand in and out on the other side and there's not a trigger finger there even though he has two pistols 
not bad hula hoop goes around rotates like i showed on hawk you got to kind of rotate as it comes up shift stuff around move it all kinds of squeaking comes up to about right there back out Boop. force 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 actually that's not shabby i think that's better than anakin rotation at the top hidden by the armor hinge of swivel at the knee goes up to about right there hinge of the ankle goes back goes forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories we do get a pair of these pistols uh we've gotten them a couple of times before well definitely rex just push and twist but like i said no trigger finger on the left side so you can't dual wield but there's also holsters that oh nice tight fit in there they're not going to fall out also comes with the clone blaster that we just saw with hawk and uh, pretty much every other clone we've ever gotten there is a curve to it it was bent in the package and then there's also the clone rifle again we've seen this several times i'm surprised i switched hands without dropping it but the biggie is the helmet get up there straight all these new clone troopers we've been getting has had an unmasked head under the helmet but all of them have been glued down now we get echo and it's a removable helmet. Nice paint apps on the top. I like that this looks a little rough because, you know, it was painted on there. And then the viewfinder is movable down to there. Like the Bad Batch, when I first put this on, I thought, oh man, that helmet looks big up on top. But now that I've been watching the Bad Batch and more Clone Wars lately, this looks accurate. I've learned to like this look and it adds to the bulkiness of the body, you know? <laughs> man, that looks good. Finally, let's get Obi-Wan out of the package. Hello there. Wow, it's not as easy if you don't cut those things first. And much like Anakin, the more I mess around with this, the more I like this overall look. At this exact second in time, this may be my favorite Obi-Wan Black Series figure. I just like the mix, the Jedi robes, the black undersuit that you can see under the robes. But Obi-Wan being a little bit older, a little bit wiser, he's gonna put some more armor on. He wants more protection. For reuse here, they took the new style clone body, use the upper arms, the shoulder pads, the lower arms, the hands, and then from the knees down. What surprised me is when I lifted the tunic, there is new legs under here, or at least the upper legs. But I like that they did this because it frees up the articulation without having to turn the leg or anything. Plus, it's a little more accurate because you can see it through there, and these new upper legs have these pads on the outside. I can see Obi-Wan thinking, oh, that's pinching my crotch. I'm not wearing those. And then there's the new torso piece under an overlay like Anakin's, where it's the upper armor and then the tunic coming out from that. Got the Jedi emblem in burgundy on the shoulder, which stands out a little bit more on Obi-Wan, but that's okay. Tan for the tunic, some brown, some golds on the belt going around. They didn't paint the little buttons. I'm disappointed. I think the biggest thing for me, and I've been seeing this in all the reveals and some of other people's pictures, the tan goes up onto the armor around the edge here. Not just the back, it does it on the front. I don't like it. It just looks sloppy. Love the head, and it is reuse of the Walgreens uh, Commander Obi-Wan. The Walgreens is duller, so it adds an artistic quality to it of some kind, but I think I like the new one better. It, it's a bit more realistic. Colors are a little bit closer to the, what we see in the show. Either way, it's an excellent sculpt. I, I probably need to hit that with some dull coat. That's going to be a play day type thing. Because I've already done a lot of gluing and drying and popping and swapping. Since it's using the new clone trooper, the shoulder pad is glued down here, which would be okay in any other situation that didn't have an overlay that blocks it from riding up onto the torso here. Like we just saw with Echo, you can force it and it bends itself up in there or it's shoving through or something. You can get the arm up, but it takes more force. Did it on the left side a minute ago. See how it bends right there? Blech. But it being rubber, it goes right back to shape. Still though, it cuts a mean silhouette. I love the proportions here. Articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Goes to a ball at the bottom. Up to about right there. Down. <laughs> Swivel. Butterfly joint at the shoulder. Talked about the shoulder pad kind of getting in the way of the hinge up, but goes up to there swivels around hinge swivel at the elbow comes up past 90 swivels you can see it cutting in right there swivel at the wrist hinge up and down on a lightsaber wielding hand i love it but it's not because it's obi-wan it's because it's reused from the clone trooper trigger finger but hey i'll take it where i can get it ball joint at the mid torso everything kind of gets in the way but you can kind of shift it around swivel the new hips come up to about right there before the lower tunic gets in the way back out oh best of the wave look at that swivel at the thigh hinge swivel at the knee again the strap 
comes around, gets in the way a bit, past 90, then you can rotate there too. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For the lightsaber, it's Obi-Wan's hilt, but again, I think it's the same sculpt we've seen before, but nicer metallic colors for the gold and the silvers. Again, the blade has been thickened a bit. I feel like I'm going to be putting this, or leaving this here in the display. Okay. <laughs> I'm just now realizing Anakin got double trigger finger hands. None of the rest do, even though Echo should have. But size-wise, Hawk and Anakin stand at about six and a sixteenth, while Obi-Wan stands at five and seven eighths, and then Echo stands at about six and an eighth. At least to the top of the helmet. What's he look like under here? There he stands about six foot to the top of his hair. I love the size difference between Anakin and Obi-Wan and then they look great with other figures like Asajj and Rex. Anakin fits right in with his progression from Attack of the Clones to Revenge of the Sith and so does Obi-Wan with the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. We don't talk about the Black Series Revenge of the Sith. And then Hawk and Echo look fantastic with other clone troopers whether it's the old school body with the 501st or the new school body with the Kamino trooper. I forgot Rex was a little bit shorter. Did he lose some with that new torso with the weld lines on it? Either way, still looks good with Rex and Wolf. And just because they're new and I had them out, here is the Bad Batch Hunter and Crosshair. Oh, look at that. You can get into an awesome looking double hand saber pose. Obi-Wan's a badass. So at the end of the day, I love these figures. I love how they look. The designs are awesome. I never thought we'd get these in action figure form, especially Anakin and Obi-Wan. But I did have to put some elbow grease in. Should I have had to do that? No. The hawk legs being swapped is a weird thing because they changed the peg size for them to be on the opposite side. So I don't know what was going on there. But the mouthpiece thing on hawk and then Echo's torso piece being glued on crooked, I can see that as just gotta get them pumped out, gotta go through the factory. I don't see that being the same on all of them. So <laughs> that's probably the old robo luck when it comes to getting new figures. I'm also noticing now that Obi-Wan's blade is a little bit darker than Anakin's, so they're different shades of blue, which is hard to see <laughs> with my blue background, but you get the idea. I love the designs of the Jedi here. Again, armor on top of their more traditional garb. As far as the likenesses go, we're used to seeing Obi-Wan with that hair with a beard, so it's easier to transition into this look. With Anakin, at least in the real world, we're not used to seeing him with that hair and slightly different looks. So it's gonna take some time for me to get used to the head, but I love the overall look. I really, really do. And then Echo's awesome. He's gonna go with the clone troopers. Hawk, I'm not as familiar with, but it's another clone trooper. I'm not gonna complain. It looks awesome. Then we swing around to the other sticking point, Target exclusive, and those have been a pain in the ass. It's not just Star Wars. I don't even wanna mention G.I. Joe, so it needs to be worked on. I don't know how many times I've said that every time I review a Target exclusive. Hopefully things will get better, because because it seems like everything is going to be But if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. You guys also know I'm one of those weird bastards that actually likes working on the figures or tweaking them or, you know, fixing little things. Again, shouldn't have to, but it was interesting finding those backwards legs and they're still bowed to the inside. I may have to heat it up, straighten them out, but I think the legs look a lot better 